Hey there, Mtiaz here from JobReadyProgrammer.com, where we teach thousands of people how to code and get jobs in software development. I want to talk to you about burnout in the workplace today. Let's start with my personal story. When I when I first experienced burnout, I joined this really hot tech startup that was later uh, bought out by one of the big uh, tech companies. But this was a small company when I joined, and there were about uh, 15 or 20 uh, tech uh, you know, people in tech, and then there were other marketers and sales. So it was a team of about 100 or so uh, employees. It was a small company. So I joined and I noticed the, the all the developers were buddy-buddy and even the CTO was always hanging out and everyone was together. And it was like this one happy family. Uh, and I kind of liked it in the beginning uh, and I kind of tried to fit in. I did kind of fit in. Um, so what I started noticing was that people are coming in late uh, leaving late, having lunch together for two hours straight. And then I noticed that, okay, people are getting sending emails at midnight, one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning. There is even, uh, you know, work meetings scheduled on the weekends. And that's when I started noticing. I'm like, oh my God, this these guys are always working. And the funny thing is that uh, that company, was, it advertised that they have unlimited vacations. But I noticed that nobody's taking vacations. When I wanted to take a vacation, I kind of felt guilty. Should I take these days off? Because no one else takes days off here. <laughs> there was a game room. There was a map lounge. There were all these things. They kind of didn't want you to leave the campus. And you see this happen in Google uh, and Facebook and a lot of other big tech giants. They don't want the employees to leave. They want, if, if you know, you can sleep there. You could spend, you know, you, you can even shower there in many cases. So they have a gym, they have everything there. And uh, that actually is a contributing factor, a lot more of a contributing factor than the actual process of coding that causes burnout. Coding does not, in my opinion, cause burnout. It's your inability to turn off your job. And that's what I experienced because I noticed that to try to fit in, I had to... Uh, go to their happy hours and, and spend extra time. They were having lunch together, which is fine, but two-hour lunch, dinner together in many cases. And they were always talking about work or, or projects. They talk about other matters in their personal life, but I have a family at home. I have a kid, I have a wife, I have parents, um, I, and I'm a very family-oriented, and I have really close friends that I uh, hang out with often. Uh, so I have kind of a, a family and friend life on my own, but then I here I've adopted this new family where I'm spending a lot of time with them. They're going on weekend getaways, renting out cabins, and uh, and the CTO is there. Even sometimes the CEO was there since it was a small company, and I felt that you know I don't want to be the only one not going. Uh, you know I need to kind of if I want to grow in this company, the CTO at least got to know my name and what I'm all about. So that was very, very stressful because uh, at a, after a certain point, it wasn't about the coding anymore. It was not being able to turn off my brain because I have certain things that make me me. I love to work out. I love to sing. I take singing classes. I take acting classes. Um, and there, I love to read. I love to uh, research tech and do my own, build my own apps and stuff on the weekends. And that's what I wanted to do, but I didn't get that opportunity because... Uh, first of all, it was my fault because I didn't show them discipline in the beginning. Uh, I noticed that everyone's coming in late, so I might as well come in late. Everyone is, you know, having a two-hour lunch, so, you know, why not? I could just hang out with them, and even though we're talking about work. But what I realize is uh, I'm not in the same situation as they are. I have a family, and uh, uh, they, these guys live, like, literally five minutes away from work. I had to commute 40 minutes uh, from work, uh, so... I had to change things quite uh, drastically. So what I did was I started coming in early, way earlier than everybody else to work, and I would only have a half an hour lunch. I'd still spend uh, have lunch with them, but I'd be the first one to leave the table. As soon as I'm done eating and chit-chatting for about half an hour, I'd leave, go back to my desk and continue to work. And I uh, basically increased my level of discipline and so that by the time I'm it's six o'clock, uh, I can actually leave. And the funny thing is in the beginning, I was there at six, seven, eight, and I'm looking at everyone else, and they're still working, and I'd feel guilty uh, for leaving earlier than them. And that is a situation that could certainly uh, cause burnout. Uh, it's not always about the code that causes this. 
It's about your inability to uh, create discipline in your in your life. Uh, that's the ultimate uh, culprit for your burnout that you might experience. So here's my advice to you. Anytime you join a company, you have to set a certain standard for everyone else, uh, uh, for any, everyone else's expectations of you. So uh, you come on time, you, let's say you come earlier than everybody else, which is great, and you have a half an hour lunch, you socialize with them here or there, but you don't spend too much time uh, wasted with just chit chat. Uh, and you're a go-getter, you work very hard, they see that, okay, this guy's a rock star programmer, and he works hard, but he has a turn-off switch. You don't, you don't send emails after 8 p.m. or 6 p.m. or whatever time you want to set for yourself. So they shouldn't expect those emails coming from you. And I know that people th say that you have to really, to grow in a career, you really have to put in 80 hours a week. I personally don't think that. Uh, to grow in, in any career, you have to grow personally. Personally, you have to grow as, a, as an individual. Not working 80 hours a week in a company, that's not what's going to grow in... In you, that's not what's going to contribute the most in your growth in your career. It's going to be what you do on the weekends. Are you studying? Are, are you learning new things? Like I used to build my own apps on the weekends. And that, that, that was fun to me. That was my way of being creative uh, outside of work, doing my own thing. This website that I built uh, and these courses that I created, I'm a bestseller. By the way, there's a Thanksgiving uh, sale uh, for my courses. Check out in the description below. It's like a 70% off or something like that, 75% or something. Uh, you'll see the discount. Uh, you can get access to all my coding courses. But these courses were my 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 projects that I developed over over the years, and I continue to update them, re-record them, scratch them, build new ones. Uh, but that's where I learned how to teach coding on the weekends outside of work. And the only way I was able to do that is I had a turn off button uh, that I would press <laughs> mentally, uh, where I'm no longer working after a certain time, and that's. After that, it was me time. And uh, while I'm at work, I'm a rock star. I work very hard. I was very effective in, in my job. And everyone saw that. They saw discipline in me. But they knew that this guy has a turn-off switch uh, after which he's uh, not available. Unless, of course, there's a big release or there's a big bug in production or U UAT that needs to be addressed ASAP. I understand that. And I was, I was available for those times. But... It wasn't uh, like everyone else in that tech startup. Eventually, I left that culture, that company culture, and I went to fintech on Wall Street, and that had a much more disciplined environment where everyone comes at a certain time, everyone leaves at a certain time, and that, you know, it really depends on your personality. I felt that that was better in tune with my personality, and I liked that uh, disciplined, structured approach. Um, I worked in both environments in hot tech startups as well as in really boring companies as well. Now let me tell you that if you're working from home, which seems to be the going trend nowadays considering what's going on in the world, uh, especially if you're in tech, uh, you're probably working from home. You have to be very, very careful because you are especially susceptible to burnout because it's much harder for you to detach yourself from your job when you're working at home because people fall in the trap of becoming more flexible and they say, oh, you know, I have a meeting at 9 a.m., so I might as well just wake up at, you know, 8.45, brush my teeth and, and put on a suit with shorts. No one's going to see the shorts and just sit in front of the, the camera. Um, you know, if you're in tech, obviously a T-shirt like this would be fine. But if you, you know, this we're going to see this happen in all industries. Everyone is working remotely now. You have to be especially uh, disciplined when you're working from home. Uh, wake up early as you normally would as if you're going to the office, take a shower, get freshened up, have your cup of coffee, do whatever morning rituals that, that you do. And then when you sit on your desk in your workstation, that's it's sacred time where you should start working. And don't leave uh, midday and say, uh, you know, I have some flexibility today. I have to, this errand that I have to take care of. Uh, for two hours, so let me just take a two-hour break. These emails that pile up, uh, you know, I'll just take care of them in the evening before going to bed. And now all of a sudden, you're you're setting the trend of sending emails at 9 p.m., 10 p.m., and all of the all of your colleagues are expecting you to answer in insane times, and that's what is going to trap you. It's a big trap. Okay, so if you're working from home, be really careful about that. Be extra disciplined, and let everyone know that these are your hours, uh, and you're going to work hard during these hours. 
but after this you have to take care of your kids your wife or whatever you, you have, you've got things to do after this time so don't don't expect you to, so that your colleagues don't expect you to answer their uh, emails at obnoxious hours uh, a, a trick to that is maybe you know uh, if you can't prevent those emails from coming in late wake up a little early uh, earlier than what if everyone is going to bed late then chances are they're not going to be able to wake up at 7 a.m. So you could be the guy, or 6 a.m. So you could be the guy that wakes up early and sends these uh, 6 a.m. obnoxious emails. And they're like, oh, this guy's been working, you know, since 6 a.m. in the morning. And you work till 4 or 5 o'clock or whatever. And people know, okay, this guy is is actually available. It's just that we, we can't really stretch beyond certain hours because he's got other things to take care of. So you have to, uh, you have to let, you have to show everyone your, your disciplinary hours uh, in which you're available. Okay, very, very important. Uh, you can fall into that trap if you're not careful. So hopefully this video was helpful. If you liked what I had to say, make sure to like this video. It really helps the YouTube algorithm. Share this video with as many people as you think it would help. Subscribe to the channel to stay up to date. And with that being said, I'm going to sign out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in another video.